Today we are going to look at chapter 3, lesson 3, and we are going to narrow our focus on the periodic table in this lesson and just talk about the metals that are on the periodic table. So let's get a definition first of all or look at what metals are. And metals are the elements on the periodic table that are good conductors of electric current and heat. We've talked about heat conduction and electric conduction before. They tend to be shiny and bendable. If you think of copper wire, you can, you know, it's kind of shiny, you can bend it. And what's sort of important here, and we'll see this in just a second, that the majority of the elements on the periodic table are metals. And that's why we are beginning by talking about metals. If you take a look at the periodic table, and if we draw your attention back to the key or the legend to know what is what, metals on the periodic table are represented by the pink boxes. So as you can see, there are a lot of metals on the periodic table. The majority of the elements on the periodic table do come from um, the metal category. So let's look at some characteristics then of metals. Let's first look at the physical properties of metals, and we mentioned quite a bit here. So the first one we're going to look at is luster. Luster just basically means that it is shiny and reflective. So when you think about a metal, you typically think of something that is shiny and highly reflective, and that is what luster refers to. When we say that metals are malleable, that means that they can be hammered or rolled into flat sheets or other shapes. So they can be pounded, you can hammer them out, you could roll them into flat sheets. Ductile is kind of similar, but it means that it can be pulled out or drawn into long wires. So you can make copper wire, aluminum wiring out of metals because they are ductile. Um, copper, for example, is both malleable and ductile. So it can be made into thin sheets or it can be drawn into wires. And that's why it is such a useful metal for us. Thermal conductivity means that it has the ability to transfer heat. It can conduct heat. Likewise, electrical conductivity means that they can conduct electricity. Also, some metals, and this is not true for all, but many metals, or some metals, are also magnetic. Iron, for example, cobalt, nickel, they are attracted to magnets. Uh, they can be made into magnets. And it's kind of important to note that only mercury is the only metal that is a liquid at room temperature. Those are the physical properties of metals. And we'll take just a quick look at the chemical properties of metals as well. The ease and the speed at which an element can combine or react with other substance is what we call its reactivity. So if something can react with something else or combine with another element, we say that it is reactive. Um, metals usually rela uh, react by losing their electrons in their atoms, um, and some we'll see in a moment are much more reactive than others, um, sort of as you move across the periodic table. When a metal deteriorates over time due to the chemical reaction with the environment, that's called corrosion. And we've talked about examples of corrosion before. So rusting is an example of corrosion. Uh, tarnishing is another example of erosion as well. Now that we have the characteristics of all metals in general, we can now see that the metals are placed into groups on the periodic table. So going back when we were talking about the periodic table the other day, we talked about the columns being called groups. The first group, the first column on the periodic table is what we call the alkali metals. So the metals of group one are called the alkali metals. They are the most reactive metals 
in the periodic table. So the metals that we find in this first group or this first column, let's see if I can get this to draw. So right here, those are the most reactive metals that we will find on the periodic table. Because they are so highly reactive, they don't want to exist by themselves. So you will only find these in compounds or combined with other elements. They are never found as uncombined elements. The next column are what we call the alkaline earth metals. So the metals that are in group two are called the alkaline earth metals. They also are very reactive, but they're not quite as reactive as the alkali metals. They also are never found uncombined in nature. They will only be combined with other elements in compounds. So that would be group two on your periodic table. This might be a little bit harder to see because it has the black background. So let's see how we do here. So group number three through group number 12 are called the transition metals. So now we're actually talking about this group of metals here in the center part of the periodic table. And these are called the transition metals. They are groups three through 12 on the periodic table. These include many of the metals that you are familiar with, iron, copper, nickel, gold, silver, um, those types of metals. They are less reactive than the metals in group one and two, so it takes a little bit longer. That's why when iron rusts, it takes a long time for iron to turn completely to rust and to go away. We also have metals in mixed groups some of the metals that you are familiar with. For example, aluminum, tin, lead. These are metals on the periodic table, but they are found um, in what we call mixed groups. Let me show you what I mean here. Let's go back to our periodic table. Here is aluminum. Here's tin and here's lead. So notice that when we look at the group that they are in, for example, there, that group, the entire group is not metals. We have um, boron, which is a metalloid. If we look at this group, tin and lead are part of a group that also has um, nonmetals and metalloids in it as well. So aluminum, tin, and lead are examples of elements that are in what we call mixed groups. So they're in groups that is a mixture of metals and nonmetals and metalloids. If you remember the other day, uh, we talked about how those rows are put across the bottom of the periodic table. Those are also um, in the categorized as metals. So now we're looking at these metals right through there. Those are what we call the lanthanides and the actinides. So the top row are the lanthanides and the bottom row, where does it tell me here, are the actinides. So below the lanthanides are what we call the actinides. So these are what we call the, the lanthanide and the actinide series. And remember, those were just dropped down there so that our periodic table would fit onto one page. And then lastly, I just want to mention that there are some elements on the periodic table that are not really naturally occurring. The elements that follow uranium on the periodic table, which I believe is number 92, these elements are all made, 
or synthesize. Synthesize means to be made, uh, man-made, um, when nuclear particles are forced to crash into one another. So anything that comes after uranium, number 92 on the periodic table, don't exist in nature. They have to be um, synthesized or made by scientists by bombarding the, them with um, these, these nuclear particles and, and causing the, there to be a, a change in their, their electron number. Um, so for example, to make elements with atomic numbers above 95, scientists use a device called particle accelerators that move the atomic nuclei at extremely high speeds. When there's enough energy, the particles can combine into a single nucleus. And they're showing you an example of a particle cell accelerator down there. All right. So that sort of covers this lesson on metals. In the next lesson, we will look more closely at the nonmetals and the metalloids. But I would like for you to go back and look at all of the in-text questions. Um, pages 88 through 95 answer those questions and also pay close attention to where it shows you the little blank periodic tables and it asks you to shade in the different groups. Um, and you may even want to, if you have colored pencils at home, you may want to shade those groups with different colors and then create a key if you would like to show which colors you have named each one of the groups. Alrighty, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.